Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gamers, having you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with another Let's Play episode of Soul Creek. So guys, let's go ahead and just jump right back into it, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes while I entertain you, and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's friggin' go. Alright. <clears throat> Literally, all we've been told about this guy is he's a scientist. That could mean anything to this lie. It could just mean someone who knows how to read. Well, that's all we have right now. It's not like Dravonia is giving you a choice anyway. Until we meet him, you're going to have to learn how to survive in this world. You're under Loken's protection now, so just stick close to him. Dravonia won't violate his Black Runner right. In the meantime, I'm going to do some internal scans of your systems. I'm not promising answers, but maybe I can get a better idea of what's happening. You just focus on staying safe. Nothing else. Just staying safe. Just staying safe. I can do that. I have to admit, without bite, I'd be screwed. The door scrapes open. I sit up and Loken acknowledges me with an inquiring stare as he enters. Hey! I'm quite relieved to, quietly relieved to see him. I'm pretty much owing my freedom now, and he's my best source of protection. He has a brown sack of supplies clutched in one paw, some firewood tucked under his armpit, and a thick rolled-up blanket over his other shoulder. I have brought food. Oh, thanks! I'm not hungry. I hadn't even thought about food until he mentioned it. I have brought firewood. Oh, thank you again. I have brought bedding and clothes. My face lights up. Really? Great! Anything warm is preferable to these topless rags. A thought suddenly occurs to me. Um, when you found me, was I... Hmm? Naked? Yes. Oh. Fantastic. Loken tosses one of the sacks onto the bed. I tuck it towards me and peer inside. The clothes aren't what I expected. They've been put together from various materials and colors. There are linen, wool, and fur pieces here. The first thing I pull out is a thick azure hoodie. It's a decent fit, and it seems thick, and it seems thickly padded for warmth. There's a large pocket at the front to put my arms in. I also find a thick pair of leggings, a rugged tunic, a black woolen toque, 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 and some clunky, prim clunky primitive footwear. There's even a pair of hefty cotton socks and some crudely soon boxer shorts. Given what the others wear, I was expecting, I was expecting Loken to bring me some kind of skimpy tribal outfit. These designs are pretty modern. Where did you get these? Our tailors fashioned them. But they look like Zephyr clothes. Yes. Why? They are okay. Yes, they're great. Are you sure I can have these? Loken shrugs. They are suitable for you. He blinks. They are suitable for you? Y yes, y yeah, they are. Th thanks. I hold the hoodie up in front of me. I'm not sure how they managed to dye it blue. It's a similar shade to Loken's eyes. Taking a leaf out of his book, I press it to my nose and sniff it. Not as bad as I thought. Reminds me of your eyes. Hmm? The hoodie. Hoodie? This, it, this, it's a hoodie. It is called a hoodie? You didn't know that? No. Oh, well, I was just saying, it's the same color as your eyes. This is important? No, I just thought it was neat. Hmm, okay. <laughs> he sits cross-legged by the fire pit and begins filling it with pieces of firewood from his sack. I tug the tunic and then the hoodie over my head. I take care not to agitate my wound. It's comfortable and warm. This is great, Logan. I appreciate it. Okay. Logan takes a pawful of dried moss from his sack and lays it into the firewood. I pause to watch him build the fireplace, fascinated. He puts a longer piece of wood on the ground in front of me and takes a smaller stick from his sack. <laughs> what sentence? After drawing a short blade from his belt, he begins pruning the end of the stick. What are you doing? Fire. Without rubbing stick? With rubbing sticks? Yes. With piqued interest, I lean closer to his, he jams the sticks against the log and begins drawing it back and forth with both paws. To my amazement, it only takes a few seconds before a small pillar of wispy smoke begins rising from it. Whoa, that was fast. Yes. You're good at that. Mmm. Before long, the fire pit is crackling with glorious flames. Soft, misty smoke drifts to the ceiling and relaxing heat smothers my sense. I'm completely mesmerized. It's heavenly. I shut my eyes for a moment as I'm sat on the bed, and I feel my muscles warming. For the first time since waking up, I'm relaxed. Come. Huh? Sit. Close to flames. He points to the ground, on the opposite side of the side of the fire to him. Before joining Loken, I decide to put on the leggings. They're much thicker than the ones I'm already wearing. It'll be nicer to have some underwear on, too. Uh, Loken, could you, um... He scowls. You know, turn away. Hmm? I need to, uh, get changed. He continues staring <laughs> for a while. Okay. 
His eyes flick to the fire, then to me. He opens his mouth to say something, but just turns his head completely away. That was weird. As quickly as I can tug the rags off, I'm wearing off. Then put on the boxers and padding... As quickly as I can, I tug the, ra tug the rags I'm wearing off. Then put on the boxers and padded leggings. They feel a little odd, but I'll take it over having my flesh exposed to the cold. Finally, dressed, I drag myself over to the fireplace and hunker down opposite Loken, trying to fold my legs and mirror his sitting position. He's still looking away. As I join him, his pointy ears curled inwards. You are dressed? Yeah. Okay. He looks at me from the opposite of the fire. The lodge is darker now. My peripheral vision is almost gone, and all I see is his face lit up by the flames. We lock our gazes together. I'm drawn to his more canine features. His ears, his muzzle, the patterns of his fur. The blue of his eyes is more prominent in the flickering firelight. I wonder what he can see looking back. I'm not even sure what my face looks like. But what's he thinking about? You. Huh? You are warm. Oh, yeah, thanks. The clothes are good. They are. Hmm. Feels like he's trying to be friendly, but I don't think he knows how. Why am I even here? If Black Runners were all loners, then why did he invoke his right for me? Hey, uh, thanks. Hmm? For saving me from your chief. She seemed prepared to have me killed. She would not. Hmm. You eat meat? I think so. Good. I have brought beef. He twitches his nose at me, then looks down at the flames. He's avoiding the subject. Hey, at least he isn't scowling at me anymore. Why did you claim me? He doesn't answer. You said you didn't trust me before, then suddenly... Become my acolyte. Sorry? You have wit. Wit? It is a black runner instinct. It is one of the four. The four? What? That is our creed. Wit is the Black Runner's sense. It is how we identify Zephyr Salvage and navigate their ruins. It is our spiritual link to their culture. You will be a great Black Runner. I stare, dumbfounded. That's why he invoked his right? Is he insane? Why would... Wait, it's because I identified some of his junk earlier. Like the toothbrush. He thinks I've got some kind of magic connection to Zephyr Salvage. I don't want to outright reject him in case he throws me out of his home, but at the same time... Um, look, Loken, I'm not... I don't have wit. I, I don't have the four. I just remember that stuff. I think maybe I was alive during the cat before the Cascade? So, like, the Zephyr were my people. It does not matter. We will start training soon. What? Hold on. Sorry, I, I, but I can't be a Black Runner. I only found out what a Black Runner is today. I don't know anything about anything. You will learn. I'm definitely not Scrap Runner material. I haven't even looked outside of this lodge yet. I've never fought any demons in my life. You do not know this. You remember nothing. Alright, he's got me there. We do not fight demons. We outwit them. You only just met me. My mentor also chose me quickly. But, Loken, come on, this is nuts. Taki told me you take acolytes when they're children. Aren't I too old? Loken opens his mouth to answer, but hesitantly shuts it again. His muzzle points downwards and his gaze drifts off to the side. I wouldn't be your first acolyte, would I? No. How many... Two... What happened to them? He has a very somber expression on his face. Acolytes should be older and wiser, as you are. You are small. You have perfect wit. The Zephyr were your people. You can help us. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Help you? How? You have much to offer. I can offer you sarcastic remarks. That's about it. We will see. Become my acolyte. In return, I will help you find where you have come from. I know there are things you are not saying. I gulp. This is okay. Become my acolyte and we will find out together. Loken. Enough. You are tired. When we think about it. Here, I have brought food. Loken reaches into his sack again, fumbling around for something inside. I want to press him further and insist that he's completely insane, but my eyes widen when he pulls out a red apple. My chief suggested humans may eat fruit. I chuckle. Huh, yeah, we do. You are smiling. I nod as he passes it to me. Yeah, I just remembered I had a dream. I think, about apples. Explain. Nothing, just one of the first things I remembered when I woke up. Loken's eyes dip in confusion. He doesn't seem to understand, but doesn't question it. He picks up a hefty stick of beef jerky and bites a chunk off, chewing lazily. I look down at my apple. I'm not hungry. I scowl and flex my belly to detect any trace of hunger, but feel nothing. I need to eat, though, right? I bring it to my mouth. Stop! What? Bite's voice booms inside my head. I yelp in shock, and the apple tumbles from my hand. Alex? What? Sorry. You are okay. I'm fine. I just, um, I... I dropped the apple. Explain. Um, it, it was nothing. I'm fine. Sorry. Just slipped. Okay. His eyes soften, but he looks concerned. 
What the hell, Bite? Don't creep on my brain like that. He's gonna catch on. Sorry, I had to. It's important. Don't eat the apple. Why? It's poisoned? Oh shit, the hound's trying to kill me? No, you don't need food. Humans need, need, humans need food to survive. No, you don't. You don't need to eat. Ever. I've been running scans on your internal operating parameters. Your body is sustaining itself perfectly, but I can't tell where it's drawing the energy reserves from. I can say for certain that it's not from food, so don't eat anything. That's a stupid bite. All humans need food. I can't... Are you hungry right now? Well, no, but... See? You haven't eaten in 12 hours. You should be famished. Oh, come on, that's... He hasn't been wrong about anything so far. And he's right. I'm not hungry. At all. He's got no reason to make this up. Are you kidding me? How? That's impossible. What's wrong with me? How could... You are okay. Uh, hang on. Talking to the both of them at the same time is extremely jarring. Oh, I'm fine. Just... I toss and catch the apple in the air as casually as I can, then place it down next to me. I am... I'm not hungry. I'll eat later, maybe. You are weak. I'll have something tomorrow. Humans, um, we don't eat that often, I guess. I'm fine. Hmm. All right. Thankfully, he doesn't question me. He goes back to munching on his jerky. These people are already suspicious of me. If Bite is telling the truth, this is re going to be really hard to hide from him. Bite! You're saying I can't eat? Ever? Exactly. Your digestive system isn't functioning, because you don't need it. Are you going to try to convince me I'm still human after this? Next, you'll tell me I don't need to breathe. Um... Would, uh... Would, would that be so bad? Huh? 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 Bite. Do I need to breathe? Um, maybe try holding your breath and seeing what happens. I look into the flames for a moment whilst Loken is quietly consuming his meal. I close my eyes and hold my breath. 20 seconds. 40. A minute. A minute and a half. I feel nothing. The urge to breathe isn't here, isn't there. Of all the things I've experienced, this is definitely the weirdest. I can still, I still can breathe. In fact, it feels odd not doing so, but I don't have to. I can hold my breath indefinitely. What the fuck is wrong with me? What am I? Damn it! Alex? I open my eyes. I see Loken staring at me with concern. I had meant to speak aloud. Uh, sorry, I, I was... You're acting strange. I've upset you. Why would he think that? Th no, no you haven't. I it's nothing. I'm fine. I have, I have not upset you? But no, why wouldn't... It is your wound. Oh, yeah, it just stings. Bad. I don't need food or air, then why do I still feel pain? Why do I still feel tired? You still have some human traits, but I've lost others. Loken promptly shuffles over to me and kneels down at my injured side. Oh, I'm fine, really. I raise a hand to try and dismiss him, but he ignores it. Be still. Nesky gently brushes my arm aside. I reluctantly allow him to access the bandages. His paws tenderly graze the linen, and my sensitive flesh flares up in protest. Ah! He puts his other paw on my shoulder to steady me. You are in pain. Mm, a bit. Loken huffs. I will get Dawn Lily from the Shaman. Dawn Lily? It is for pain. Oh. I feel the pads on his fingers and palms knead very lightly against my shoulder. I have to admit, he has some kind of magic touch. Every time his paw puts pressure on me, I... He's looking at me. Hey. You are okay. Uh, I don't know. I'm just... There's a lot going on. Hmm. You are... Small. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> you should rest. Yeah. I have bedding for you. Thanks. Loken takes his paw off me. He, cro he crosses the lodge to fetch the extra blankets. Hey, Loken? Hmm? I mean it. Thanks. I really don't know what's happening with me. I don't know why I can't remember anything or where I came from, but... Thanks. He twists his head in a very dog-like fashion, then nods. All right. Here. He passes the blankets and a pillow to me. They're very thick. There's enough There's enough here for me to make some makeshift bedding on the floor. Stay by the fire. I will go to the village. What? Where are you going? I pull the blanket over my shoulders as he moves to the exit. The village. I meant, why? To see the shaman. What for? Don Lily, for you. Remain here. You need to rest. I want to argue, but he's right. I'm exhausted. Will you be gone long? I will not. Okay, thanks. Okay. The drugs are bad. Okay. Okay. His gaze lingers on me for a moment. Then he stoops under the doorway and heads back outside. I turn back to face the fire. The heat soaks into my skin and my muscles begin to feel lighter. 
I'm exhausted. My body starts to feel heavy. I'm hypnotized by the flames dancing before me. My face is starting to feel dry from the heat, but I don't care. I'm just so exhausted. I should call Bite and talk to him. After I take a second to myself, my eyes begin to shut. My head falls onto my chest. My eyes jerk back up suddenly. All my peripheral vision has gone dark. There's just, there's just those gorgeous warm flames. Hmm. I shut my eyes. Ooh. Alex, hey, are you with me? Bite, what are we doing here again? You're asleep in the rapid eye movement stage right now. Your muscles are immobilized and your neurological functions are lighting up. So, you're just about conscious enough for us to talk. I must have been exhausted. This, this is where we first met. Yep, you're deep subconscious. Sorry, I meant to call you after Loken left. Why are you sorry? Well, you know, I don't want you to feel like I'm not, like I'm ignoring you or anything. I'm just an AI, Alex. I don't have any real emotions. Are you sure, like, you don't feel anything? I have a personality matrix that simulates emotions. But they're not real. I'm not alive. Uh, okay, if you say so. I've got enough on my mind without having to do the I have a to, to do the <laughs> well, having the do I have a soul discussion. So, how'd your scans go? Any sign of that computer chip in my brain? No. I'd have picked it up by now. It could be a blind spot. It could be a blind spot for you. I don't see another explanation. We really need an expert opinion. Just our luck waking up with savages that we don't that don't even know what a human is. That's the peak of hypocrisy coming from you. Good thing you can translate them or we'd be screwed. Hey, how come I how come I had that translation software in the first place? You said my memory drive was empty. Yes, but you have two. A conscious and subconscious drive. Your subconscious memory data is still intact. Those are your implicit memories. Things like languages, mathematical concepts, or automatic instincts. You can't actually read your subconscious memories, but I can. Even for me, they're heavily encrypted. Then it must have had some kind of life before all this. Absolutely. All the more reason to keep hunting for answers. We shouldn't tell Aeon everything to be safe. Maybe keep you out of it. Whatever you decide, stick close to Loken. He'll keep you safe. But he wants to make me a Black Runner. You should become a Black Runner. Are you insane? Why? Well, firstly, he claimed you from his, he claimed you from his chief so he could keep you as an acolyte. That was a big move. If you reject him, what's to say he won't give you back to Dravonia? Secondly, think about where he found you. So think about a hibernation pod in a black zone. Right. You're the last human, the last Zephyr. The answers we need will be in these black zones, with the ruins of your people. Loken said he'll help us search, if we agree to if we agree to be his acolyte. It's too dangerous. What about these demons? It honestly sounds like they're just crazy rogue machines. Even more reason to investigate. There might be a link between their technology and mine. So let's do it. Become Loken's acolyte. Besides, it'd mean you get to spend more time with him. And that's definitely a good thing. Why is that a good thing? Because you like him. Excuse me? You're physically attracted to him. Alright, I'm gonna pause it right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to... It's like he's about to have the talk with a computer program. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Let me know what your theories in the comments are about exactly who do you think we are. Or what we are. Is it possible we've got some kind of Terminator situation going on where we're actually a machine in disguise with just enough human parts to pass the test? <laughs> to be convincing enough? Yeah, I'm very, very curious. That's what it makes me think. It makes me think that this person's like, I guess maybe his brains, uh, his brain was scanned and stored in like a data drive and that it was kind of uploaded to like a machine human hybrid. Hmm. Interesting to think about. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.